Hey YouTube, uh, I wanted to do, I've been talking about doing this video for a long time. Uh, what I know, kind of what you're looking at right now doesn't make sense because you're just looking at my filthy workbench, but I promise it'll make sense here in a second. So I, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I wanted direct port nitrous on my LS swapped Corvette. Well, I have this intake here. This is a fast LSXR. And you can see fast LSXR 102. And you can see on these, they have the bung right here for direct port nitrous, right? And yes, I know, I still have my injectors and the hats and everything on it. Um, one thing I want to point out, and this has nothing to do with the nitrous or anything, this is my first time I've ever run E85 on any kind of vehicle that I built or anything. I took the fuel rails off this thing, and I think my ethanol sensor or the flex sensor in the car right now says I'm about 75% ethanol. I had no idea pulling apart the fuel system with that high of ethanol would remind me of being like 17 years old and puking my brains out from Vladimir Vodka, because that's exactly what it smells like. I gagged like five or six times. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So what I want to talk about today is how to drill these out for nitrous nozzles. Now, I don't actually have the nitrous nozzles yet because I wasn't 100%. I was looking at a couple different styles of direct port nitrous. I'm doing dry, okay? I'm doing a progressive dry system. And if you're unfamiliar with what that means, there's tons of videos on the difference between wet and dry nitrous. I am doing progressive dry, meaning that it's going to flutter the solenoid to start the nitrous shot off low and then progressively get more and more and more as the RPM goes up. I'm doing that with direct port instead of having a plate system or anything like that. Because it's a dry system, I will only have one line going to each one of these ports instead of two. I'll just have a nitrous line. I won't have a fuel line because my computer will compensate for fuel at the injector. These injectors are way bigger. These are 76 pound injectors. They're way bigger than what I need just for the motor naturally aspirated. So they're big enough to compensate for the motor and quite a bit of nitrous. And at least that's the idea. Um, so what I needed to do is drill these out. What I wasn't 100% sure of is when you drill this out, there's two different options for direct port nozzles. Either a straight blow through like 180 degree or a 90 degree where it actually blows through at an angle. Until I drilled this out and I took the intake off and really looked at it, I didn't know 100% which one I wanted. Well, now I'm here to say you definitely want the, the traditional 90 degree nozzle. They work great in these. And that makes sense because Fast designed it that way. That's the most common style of nozzle. Um, you get the idea. So what I want to talk to today, now, a lot of you are probably going to say, why don't you just take it to a machine shop and have them drill and tap because then it'll be perfect. And my reasoning for that is I hate parts going to machine shops. If I can do it myself, I will. So I'm very confident that I can do this myself. Um, let's start with the mechanics of this. The holes themselves, after you drill these, the thread pitch on a standard nitrous nozzle is 1 16th NPT, National Pipe Thread. Uh, so what you need to do is drill this out. If you look at the a drill tap size chart, this would be a letter D as in David drill bit. Uh, I got these. Uh, this is just regular high-speed steel drill bits. I got this set of th just a pack of these off eBay. One thing I will point out about letter gauge drill bits, if you're going to buy cheap, obviously you're just drilling plastic here. It doesn't have to be a ridiculously strong drill bit, but what you want to avoid, and sorry, this package is so bad. What you want to avoid is if you found one of these real cheap black oxide bits in a letter D, avoid these because half the time with these real cheap bits, they're bent out of the package. And if you tried to use that for something even in plastic that's precise like this, you're going to wallow that hole out way bigger than it should be with a hand drill. You're already doing this with a hand drill, which is a, which is a mistake. I understand this. So you want it to be as precise as you can possibly get it with a hand drill. Now you might be saying, how in the world are you ever going to drill that straight with a hand drill? Well, you need some help. This is, this is what I came up with. These are drill jigs that I 3D printed. I designed these on, uh, I think I use Fusion 360, but I designed these, um, and this is what I'm, this is what I use. I already have two of them drilled. Uh, I made two. 
me set this one down because it's tough to do one-handed. I wasn't sure if I'd need this one or not. You'll notice what I did is it's just, I think this is 50% infill, so it's not real super dense. This is just out of standard PLA+, plus. Um, nothing fancy as far as 3D printing materials go. It's a real basic kind of material. Um, so I just made a cylinder with a hole through the center of it, and it has this, this nipple sticking out of the end. And what it's designed to do is it fits down inside this bung in this inner portion, and it fits like this. And if you hold it in there like that, it's pretty solid, but, sorry, my camera's getting blurry on me. So the only problem with this one, I don't know if you can see it or not, it has a little wiggle to it that I wasn't real happy with, okay? Well, that was supposed to be a pilot, and I didn't even know that I'd need a pilot, to be honest with you. Then I designed this one, and this one is a much larger hole. This is for the letter D bit, and you can see it has a taper at the end instead of having that nipple at the end. And what that does is that engages on the bung itself this tapered wall that's inside. And when you put that in there, it is completely solid. It is 100% centered. There's no wiggle at all. And you can already see, I've already drilled out these two before I started the video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you down. I'm gonna angle the phone here, or my camera. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm using a phone to do this. I'm gonna <laughs> set my camera down um, and angle it so you can kind of see me drill. And I'll show you just the quick process of how I do it. Um, and then I will show what the hole looks like when we're done. Let me use my handy roll of tape to prop you up here. There we go. So, we take our jig, we put it right down inside. Hand drill on low speed. I like to get the jig kind of right there. Get the hole started. I like to keep pulling the plastic chip, so to speak, out. Because if you think about it, the, the excess plastic you're removing doesn't really have anywhere to go. The flutes and the bit aren't going to pull it out far enough. So you need to pull that out to get those out. When you can only drill so far and then you gotta pull it out. There we go. We're all the way through. So let's take a look. There's the top of our hole, right? Now, of course, that's not tapped yet and it's not reamed or anything like that. But let's see what it looks like on the inside. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably not because my camera sucks. Okay. Well, and this is really difficult to do with no hands. You can see, uh, okay, you can see the big hole there where the injector is. In your view, it's going to be right to the bottom and to the left of that hole. You can see, or the injector hole, you can see where the hole came out for that nitrous nozzle. So it's nice, and they're uniform. If I move over to this one, uh, you can kind of see the hole right there. You see? So using the jig like this, it comes out nice, even, perfect every time, no need for a machine shop. So after I'm done drilling all the holes, um, I have a tap somewhere. I'll have to locate it. I have no idea what I did with it. And I'll be honest with you, I probably lost the tap by now because I ordered the parts to do this like a long time ago. Um, I've probably lost it and I'll have to order another tap 
and then I'll find the original one, which would just piss me off. But you know how that goes. It is what it is. I'm not in any hurry. This is, I want this done. You know, this is a over the winter project and it's November now and I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit, but that's okay. Um, but so once these are all drilled, I just have to go through and tap the holes. Now I can order the nitrous nozzles. Well, once I tap the holes, I'm going to go through the bottom and just probably with a utility knife blade or something and just clean up the underneath inside just a little bit, just to take any burr off the inside. Also make sure there's not any plastic debris that could get sucked down into the motor. Once that's all clean and tapped and, and all that, uh, I'm not hundred percent sure if I'm going to put the nitrous nozzles in yet. I may cause just cause they're really cheap. I may buy one sixteenth NPT plugs and just Allen head plugs. And I might put those in just to plug the holes for now, just so I don't obviously have a vacuum leak. Um, and then put the intake back on that way, because this is, this isn't the only upgrade I'm doing over the winter. I've got in the box down there, I have uh, total engine airflow stage two heads in here. I have steel half shafts from action machine that are going on the car. So there's a lot that I'm doing. Uh, I don't have any of the nitrous parts yet other than the bottle and a couple hard lines. I still need all the under hood stuff. I still need the um, Holly uh, solid state relay to run the progressive and yada. You know, I, I still need a lot of parts. Um, I'm not there yet. So I very well might just drill and tap these, get them ready, and then put a plug in it. So that way I get the car running with the new heads and everything. And then all I have to do is pop the plugs out with the intake installed and I can put the nozzles in. You know, I might do it that way. I'm not sure yet. I've made up my mind. But that's it. That's what I wanted to show you is how I drilled and tapped these. Now, if you don't do um, any kind of 3D design, I don't really either. This is actually the first thing I ever 3D designed on my own. Um, if there was any interest in these, uh, I, I could try to put the uh, STL file on Thingiverse or one of those other websites like that. Uh, so if you are into 3D printing, you could download this and, and print it. Um, maybe if there was some interest in it, those of you that don't do 3d printing, if there was enough interest in this, maybe I would, I don't know, sell these for a couple of bucks. I have no idea if there's any interest in that. Um, let me know in the comments, I guess, you know, just, uh, maybe I'll put together a kit with a tap, a drill bit and a little, little jig and sell them on eBay or something. I don't know, but, um, that's all I got guys. Thanks.